Uh, we're seeing, as you've just heard, low numbers of uh, the demand on our system. We've got uh, low numbers of people in intensive care, and in fact, our hospital capacity is out there um, ready and willing if it's needed to be used. But um, I think that we need to be cautiously optimistic about uh, what we're seeing. Um, we don't want anyone to uh, to, to lose the, 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 the momentum that we've gained so far in, uh, in achieving these incredible no, low numbers. But it will only take a few people to do the wrong thing, and we could be back without breaks. So this is going to give us that three weeks to further consolidate all of the equipment that we've been purchasing, all of the PPE, mm. further work in be, being able to sustain that hospital capacity should we need it, and, uh, and certainly making sure that our, um, our capacity to... Uh, to contact trace anyone that any positive cases is there ready and waiting if and when it's called upon to do so so this is a sustained time now this three weeks to just make sure that we've got everything we need in place um, in order to then slowly um, begin to consider what we might do from here is now the right time to start looking at some elective surgeries restarting uh, absolutely, and, and we've always been considering the balance between the impact of, uh, of cancelling a great deal of the surgery on the community and COVID-19 and making sure we've got that balance. So now, as you've heard, we are starting to consider the sort of things that need to be done that won't have a huge impact on our PPE stores, but will have a massive benefit for those patients who've been waiting for this important surgery. Surgery has been going on. It hasn't stopped altogether. We've been doing a lot of emergency work. Now, there's some of those things we can start to reintroduce. We heard mm. uh, you know, IVF and some of those things, but it will be very carefully monitored. And as you've heard from the AMA, we'll be keeping a close eye on what's being done and what impact that might have on, on this, the hospital system in general. You mentioned IVF. I think many uh, families, couples who have gone through the heartbreak of IVF uh, for years and years would be happy to hear you say that this morning. So IVF among uh, surgeries, you think that could possibly start a, as early as tomorrow, depending on uh, demand in each state and how our doctors are equipped to do that? Look, I'm not going to preempt what the uh, National Cabinet Fair said enough. today because ultimately it's their decision. Um, but we do believe that these are the sort of things that we should be reconsidering and we all really do understand how important IVF is to many families out there and, and I want them to realise that we are taking this very seriously. Again, I don't want you to preempt National Cabinet, but what kind of things are low-risk elective surgeries, uh, dental work, knee and hip replacements, that kind of thing? Yes, those sort of things. Um, uh, a range of surgeries really ac across the system. We, uh, we will um, work with the, particularly the, the surgeons, the anaesthetists and, and, and nurses across the system, which we've already done, in saying, well, where are the best avenues and what should we be doing? But importantly, you need to look, and hospitals will need to look at who and what is on their waiting list, and that will help them prioritise those things that they think are most important. We've had to delay some surgeries, obviously, and hips and knees, cataracts, those sort of things have such an impact on people's lives. Um, and once the surgery is done, they can get back to work or get back to do what, doing normal life. And we really understand that, that is, uh, waiting for these things is really difficult for many people out there. Alison, will we see a backlog? We, we will need to catch up on all of this surgery that we've not been able to do, and, uh, and we realise that. Um, there's, there's a lot of things that have been postponed, um, and so once we're ready and we have the capacity in our hospital system, we'll have to look at how we can um, make up that time that we've lost um, so that those people waiting for surgery can, uh, can get that that they need.